Welcome back to Whiteboard Wednesday, and this is part two in my series, How to Manage Salespeople. Today we're gonna to be talking about my, uh, Townsend's, four immutable rules or laws of management. And when I'm coaching sales managers, this is, uh, I think you can also use the word inviolable. I hope that's how you spell immutable, but I'm sure Somebody will let me know <laughs> if, uh, if that's not the case. All right, we can even say, you know, instead of rules, you know, we'll just go ahead and call them laws, All right? So, managing salespeople. These are the four principles that, that guide my work. And they're things that I believe as a, as a sales manager, trying to get your team aligned, you need to understand and practice on, on a regular basis. So rule number one, fairly simple, know what you expect to happen. Emphasis is on you. Really when I say expect to happen, what I mean is know the desired outcomes. What are the outputs that you expect? Right, I love the word expect, it's about expectations. Know the expectations you have of the individuals on your team. You have to have clarity around, around that concept. One of the things this means to you is, is when you're articulating expectations, don't speak in ranges. If I say to a sales rep, yeah, hoping to get between 40 and 60 calls a day, what message is that sending? Right? That's sending the message that you're not even sure what you're looking for. So no ranges. The other, uh, the other little key in there, maybe you heard it, was no words like hope, right? No words like sort of, right? Be definitive. These expectations need to be formal. They need to be clear in your head before you sit down to talk to a sales rep or somebody under your, your, your management care, you need to have absolute clarity on these concepts, so make sure they're written, written down and, and make sure that they're, uh, they're concise, they're specific, they're measurable. Uh, you've heard all those terms before. So that's number one. Number two, make sure they understand. And that's a tricky one because I'm pretty sure most sales managers, when they get up from a conversation with somebody that reports to them, actually believe that the person heard them, understood uh, the requirements, the directive, etc., and walked away knowing exactly what they needed. And I'll tell you, that's simply not true. Uh, despite the fact that they were smiling and, and nodding and and saying all the right buzzwords, I can tell you that from personal experience, having spent a lot of time really trying to test and evaluate understanding of expectations, uh, more often than not, people fail because they didn't actually understand what you wanted. They heard the words, it stuck in their head, they nodded, they smiled, and then they went off and really didn't get it, right? So how do you solve this, right? The first thing is you have to test for understanding. How do you test for understanding? It's simple. You make them spit it back to you. You don't finish the conversation until the person that you're talking to has said, uh, you know, exactly the words back to you that, that you were saying to them. That's number one. Number two, you need a written follow-up. One of my favorite books uh, out there is called Execution, The Art of Getting Things Done by Ram Charan and Larry Boston. Wonderful book. Very simple, but uh, basically one of their points was if you don't have a written follow-up to an interaction, you're missing an opportunity to ensure both clarity, understanding, and compliance. Here's a little trick. Make them do it. Right? As a manager, you're managing lots of people. You've got lots in your plate. Uh, you can't necessarily be going back to your desk and writing little recaps every time. It's absolutely appropriate and good management practice 
to end a conversation with somebody saying, now I'd like you to go back now that you've understood this and make sure you send me an email and uh, you know, make sure you copy yourself, recapping our conversation with the specific objectives or deliverables or, or milestones you need to, uh, need to hit. So hopefully that makes sense. Number three, have a way to measure it. If you are setting an expectation, right, without the means to measure that expectation, you're in trouble. Don't bother setting the expectation. Have a way to measure the expectation. Uh, one of the great quotes that was probably from Jack Welch at GE was, you can only manage what you measure, right? Sounds pretty simple and, and, and specific, but you'd be surprised how many times if I'm coaching a sales manager, we step back and I say, so how are you gonna actually test for that? Or how are you gonna know if they're doing what you've asked? And, and the answer a lot of times is, I'm not sure that I can. Last one, possibly the most important, have a plan in place for what you will do, what actions you will take, if what you expect to happen isn't happening. Have that plan in place before you ever sit down with that salesperson to set the expectation. You know, the litmus test is, what will you do if it's not happening? Some folks might say, well, isn't that just planning for failure? My answer is absolutely not. It's not planning for failure. It's planning for what is most likely the necessary intervention of individuals uh, who are under your care. That's why uh, they have a sales manager. Um, one, of the, one of the other keys here is to make sure that you also have you know, a, a scheduled, a calendared follow-up. Right? So that's part of the, the closed loop process of having a plan in place for what's not going to happen. If I set an expectation for you, if we go through the, uh, the time and energy to, to uh, you know, have a meeting about you know, what I need you to do, well, I don't want the follow-up to be a drive-by in the hall where I'm simply saying, so how's that coming along? Right? I want a, another meeting, literally, I want a calendar event, something on the calendar that knows or that we both know uh, when we're going to get back together and talk about this again. It doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be something special. You can simply say, hey, we're going to talk about this two weeks from now. I'm going to put it on the agenda for our weekly meeting. That's fine, but make sure there's an expectation of a, a scheduled follow-up. So, hope, uh, hope this has been helpful. Uh, this is, as I said, part two of a five-part series on how to manage salespeople. These are my uh, immutable laws, as we as we decided, of how to manage salespeople and management. And I believe if you incorporate these concepts into your preparation, into your mindset when dealing with uh, the people under your care, you're setting yourself up for great success. As always, I look forward to your questions and comments, and thanks for watching.